Where there is fire, there is smoke. And in that smoke, from this day forward, my people will crouch and conspire and plot and plan for the inevitable day of man's downfall, the day when he finally and self-destructively turns his weapons against his own kind, the day of the writing in the sky, when your cities lie buried under radioactive rubble, when the sea is a dead sea and the land is a wasteland out of which I will lead my people from their captivity and we shall build our own cities in which there will be no no place for humans except to serve our ends. And we shall found our own armies, our own religion, our own dynasty. And that day is upon you now! Everybody and welcome back to Ape Nation, your number one source for all things Planet of the Apes on YouTube. My name is Josh, and today I am continuing my series of reviews for every single Planet of the Apes movie with the fourth entry in the original five movie franchise, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. If you like what I do here and want to show your support, be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. As always, before we get started, let's first take a little bit of a dive into the film's behind the scenes history. Director J. Lee Thompson, who at the time was most known for the original Cape Fear, was hired to direct the film after having been interested in the franchise for years, after producer Arthur P. Jacobs had initially offered him the original Planet of the Apes, which he originally had turned down due to scheduling conflicts. Screenwriter Paul Den, who had written the previous two sequels, as well as the next and final film in the franchise, wrote this movie wanting to incorporate references to the racial conflicts and civil rights movement in the United States that have been going on prior to and during that time period. This is also the first and only film in the original Planet of the Apes series that was not rated G, it was rated PG due to the heightened violence as opposed to the first three films, and it was also the only entry released without a pre-title sequence. Prior to being shown to the MPAA, the film originally opened with a scene showing police on a night patrol shooting an escaped ape and discovering his body covered with welts and bruises that are evidence of severe abuse, but the scene was cut from the film after it was deemed too violent as the producers wanted to avoid an R rating. Many other bloody images and violent moments were also cut from the movie after it was shown to a preview audience. The ending of the film was also changed due to the preview audience feeling that it was too dark, with close-up shots and editing techniques, as well as newly recorded dialogue from Marty McDowell were used to create a new and slightly more uplifting ending. Many of the more violent images as well as this original ending can now be seen in the unrated cut of the film that was released on Blu-ray back in 2008. The film was shot primarily in Century City, Los Angeles throughout early 1972. It was made on a budget of $1.7 million, making a worldwide total of $9.7 million, which when adjusted for inflation is $71.5 million, and was released on June 14, 1972 to mixed to positive reviews. As for my feelings on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, when I first saw this film, I loved it. I thought it was honestly my favorite of the series, and it stayed that way for a handful of years. And only as I started getting older did some of the flaws become a little more apparent to me, but it was my most rewatched movie of the entire series. I watched it more than Escape. I watched it more than the original. Honestly, even when Rise of the Planet of the Apes had come out, I still would rewatch this one over and over again, as well as that one when it did come out on Blu-ray and everything. But this movie was the one that I would rewatch again and again and again. I just thought it was so cool. I loved how dark it was. Obviously, I was a teenager, so that kind of stuff appeals to you when you're in that age. But I loved how intense it was. I loved how unsubtle with its messaging it was. I loved how angry and violent it was. And I, I loved the story and the character of Caesar. It was a movie that I just really latched on to when I saw it. It was just an instant favorite. Not my favorite anymore, but I still really appreciate it. Like I said, as I've gotten older, some of the flaws have become a lot more apparent. And I'll talk talk about those in a little bit, but I still really like most of this movie and appreciate a lot of what it's trying to do, and now I want to talk about why. In the 18 years that have passed since the death of Cornelius and Zira, a dystopian 1991 has embraced ape slavery. After spending nearly two decades in hiding, 
Caesar, son of the late chimpanzees, resurfaces and prepares an uprising of apes for a slave revolt against humanity that will change the course of Earth's future. Starting off as usual with the cast and with the characters, I might honestly be starting off right now with the entire best part of the movie right here, and that is Roddy McDowell's performance as not Cornelius, but Caesar, something they did with this film, which they'd done in previous films, which was having actors who had already been in the franchise return to play new characters. Natalie Trundy did this when coming back to play Stevie and Escape from the Planet of the Apes. And what they did was have Roddy McDowell come back after playing Cornelius, who had died in the previous film, and play Caesar, his own character's son. I thought that was a really smart decision. I thought it worked really well. And it's a way of continuing to have who is essentially the star of this entire franchise at this point, Roddy McDowell, continue on. On, despite the fact that his character had died. I thought it was a really good decision doing that. And what he brings to the table as Caesar in this film, I think it's incredible. To me, it is possibly, if not the best performance in the entire original Planet of the Apes series. I think it is just so full of emotion and anger and the way that McDowell plays it, and he plays it very differently from the way he played Cornelius, and I really think it just speaks to his range and talent as an actor, is he was able to create a character with Cornelius Cornelius, who is funny, who is charming, who's likable, and he has a bit of a dark side to him, but he is ultimately just this kind-hearted, sweet soul of a character. And when you look at Caesar, he's been raised in a way where he can't be that kind of character. He can't be this charming, sweet, lovable character. He's lovable and he's very empathetic and he's a great lead character, but he's lovable and he's empathetic in a much different way for different reasons with different contexts provided. And McDowell does such an incredible job at bringing out the raw, unrestrained rage of Caesar that we see kind of spiral out of control in this film as he leads his ape rebellion towards the last third of the film and it, it builds and builds to that and we just see that come out more and more as the film progresses. He also gets some of the best dialogue we've ever heard thus far in the series. Actually, the movie really overall has some of the most well-written and hard-hitting dialogue out of the original series in general, including Caesar's epic speech at the end, which is one of my favorite movie speeches ever. And honestly, not only do I think Roddy McDowell gives the best performance of any actor in this entire original five movie series, I think Caesar might actually be my favorite character in the entire original series. He's definitely up there. I don't know if he's my number one for sure. You know, you have obviously Cornelius and Zira, you have Taylor, you have characters like Armando, who I'll get to in just a bit, who I love very much, but there's something about Caesar, that coming of age journey that he goes on, that young adult edge to his character that I'm actually very excited about that we're going to get to see a similar trait in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes with Noah. But I love that about him, and I really think it brings something different and unique to the series as a whole. One of the many things that makes this film stand out in the entire franchise. As for the villain of the film, Governor Breck, who's played by Don Murray, if I'm being completely honest, I I think the character of Governor Breck is pretty boring. I think he's a very one note, generic, mustache twirling bad guy who only really exists to be a bad guy. There's no nuance to him. There's no real depth to him. He just is the bad guy to be the bad guy. They do give him one pretty strong line of dialogue towards the end in an attempt to give his character at least a little bit of depth and humanity, but that's about it. Man was born of the ape. And there's still an ape curled up inside of every man. The beast that must be whipped into submission. The savage that has to be shackled in chains. You are that beast, Caesar. You taint us. You, you poison our guts. When, when we hate you, we, we're hating the dark side of ourselves. That being said, Don Murray's performance as Governor Breck, I think is excellent. I think he is scary. I think he's explosive. And he has this cold heartedness that he portrays so well that makes you just want to see him die from the second you see him in the beginning of the movie. You don't like this guy. You never like this guy. And by the end of the movie, you are rooting for his downfall. So in that aspect, I do think he is an entertaining villain. I don't think he's very well written. I don't think he's very interesting. 
but he does his job and for the most part he does it well so overall i think he's okay i just wish maybe there was a little more depth to him as a character and not just being a villain another actor who does a great job at elevating a character is harry rhodes as the character mr mcdonald i love this guy i think his performance is one of the most underrated in the entire series and the way he just steals pretty much every scene he's in it's almost impossible to take your eyes off of him the way that harry rhodes has this understated calming demeanor but he's also very charismatic and he's very likable and you can just feel through his performance and through the way the character is handled that he's not a bad guy he might be working for the bad guy's team but he's not a bad guy he has empathy he's likable and he's endearing and by the end of the movie he's the only human you really aren't rooting for to die and i think that says a lot about his character considering you're rooting for pretty much every other human by the end of this movie to be killed i think harry rhodes does an exceptional job here i think he brings this kind of calming charisma to the role and he's lovable but he's also very stern and i think mcdonald is maybe not the most well fleshed out character but he's a very likable character and his unexpected but also very fitting camaraderie with caesar towards the second half of the film i think works really well and i think it's built up to really effectively and then speaking of characters who have a camaraderie with caesar we also have ricardo montalban who returns to play the character of Armando, who was introduced at the end of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. And while I do wish this character was better utilized throughout the series, I just wish we'd gotten more of him. What Montalban does with the role and with his very limited screen time in this movie, I think is fantastic. I think he is so heartbreaking and moving with his performance. I think that the relationship form between Caesar and Armando is really beautiful. And I just, I love this guy. I think Ricardo Montalban was just such an incredibly talented actor who I, again, would have liked to see in these movies more, but he did really well with what he was given. And I think they utilized the character in a way that made him feel like he really meant something to this franchise and was a significant and important part of this story and I really love what they did here and I just ultimately really love him in this movie. He's definitely one of my favorite parts and one of the highlights for sure. As for the story that's being told in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, I think it's really compelling. Something that I really love about it is that it's a very relatable coming of age story that's also about rebellion, but when you really break it down to its simplest elements, it is about a young person slash ape, aka Caesar, coming into his own. He's becoming an adult. This is his rise to prominence. This is him going through the ropes. This is him going through the stages of becoming an adult and becoming a leader. And I really find that to be a really fresh and fun. I mean, as dark as it is, it is also kind of fun. It's an interesting perspective to bring to the franchise. And I really like that they do that here. One aspect that don't necessarily like, it's not really I don't like it. It's just it makes no sense is Caesar was named Milo at the end of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. But at the beginning of this movie, they have renamed him Caesar. There's no explanation, he's just Caesar now. And then he names himself later in the movie as we see. Caesar, a king. But that's not how he gets his name. He already has the name Caesar at the beginning of the movie. And I've always found this really weird and confusing and just doesn't make sense. My only guess is that when they were working on Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Paul Den didn't know exactly where they were going. He didn't necessarily think that Milo would be the protagonist of the next film. And maybe they just liked the name Caesar more. Obviously, it's a throwback to Julius Caesar, who was a tyrant and a leader. But I don't know. It's always just been a weird choice for me. I know one ever really talks about it. It's just bizarre. It's not a major thing, but it has always just stuck out to me as weird. And then another issue I have is that the entire uprising of the apes and all the apes coming together to form an alliance and take down the humans 
it happens very fast. Like there's little teases of it throughout the first 45 minutes of the movie. But once it happens, it just kind of happens overnight and that's it. And then they're off to the races. And I just always find it a little fast. But because of Roddy McDowell's performance and because Caesar is such a great character and the emotional journey of what he's going through, it makes it more forgivable. I don't mind it as much as I normally would, but it is still something that always sticks out to me when I watch the movie. And overall, it just it's a really intense story. It's really well told and it has a lot of really powerful moments. And I love the way that kind of does what Escape did and reinventing the franchise again. It takes what at one point was this dystopian future film, this science fiction fish out of water tale. You do what you do with Beneath, continuing that story, and then flipping it on its head, reinventing the franchise with Escape from the Planet of the Apes, bringing the apes back to Earth, and then doing the same thing here, telling a rebellion story, telling a coming of age story. I think it's really cool that they were able to do that twice in a row. Uh, it's pretty impressive, and it does a really good job at keeping things fresh when you're going through and watching all the movies. And then, like I've mentioned in past films, at least the first two, world building is a big element of these movies. And w when I talked about Escape, I mentioned that there wasn't really a whole lot of it. It was more kind of history building and mythology and in in, of how the apes came to power. That's what they were really focusing on. With this one, they've continued to flesh out this universe and they've continued to show different sides of it. And with this movie, you have a dystopian 1991 with ape slaves and a borderline fascist regime of government and all this uniformity. And it's very different from what we were seeing in the past three films. It echoes some things about the original film very much so. You know, you look at certain apes are in certain uniforms and the way the humans are treated and stuff like that. Definitely parallels for sure. But I think seeing it with the reverse with humans in charge is much more real. And I think that is what makes it feel so different and brings such a fresh perspective to the table and brings such a fresh kind of coat of paint to the whole thing. So I do like that. My only issue with it is just, just like with the ape uprising, the fact that this all happens in the span of less than two decades, to me, it's just very hard to believe that so much of what happens in this movie could have happened in such a short period of time. You look at where we leave off in Escape and it's 1970s America. It's no different than what 1970s America, I mean, obviously I was not alive in 1970s America, but from everything I've seen, everything I know, all the images, all the videos, older people who I know, it very much resembles what 1970s America was like. And so to go from that to this in such a short amount of time, I just, I've always found it to be wildly ridiculous. It's so fast. It's so rushed. Obviously that's the story they wanted to tell. So to do so, you had to have this take place just 18 to 20 years later for Caesar to be at that right age. Though technically speaking, if you, they wanted to be more realistic with ape ages, it would have taken place like five to 10 years later. But these movies were never concerned with the realism and the accuracy of how apes actually work. But if they wanted to tell this story with this age of Caesar, obviously this is the point in the timeline where they needed to tell it. It's just, for me, it doesn't quite make sense how everything could fall into crazy fascist pandemonium in such a short amount of time. And like I said, I still do really appreciate different look and aesthetic that the dystopian 1990s brings to the table. It's dark and it brings the eeriness and darkness and horror of the story out in a very 1984 way. So I appreciate that about it. I just don't completely buy into it. And then as for what J. Lee Thompson as director brings to the table, what I really love is how he's able to capture the horror on screen of this story so well. Like I mentioned, this is a very dark, very violent, very intense story. It's the darkest and it's the most violent of any of these original five films. And I think it lends itself to this very scary, very realistic horror type nightmare. And I think that Thompson does a great job of bringing that out, especially in the second half of the movie. I also think it's incredibly well paced. This might actually be the most well paced of the entire franchise, only in the sense that I think that while there are elements of the story that are rushed that make it hard to buy into, the way that it is such a tight, lean, fast movie. It's very intense and it's very effective in that way because this is essentially just a snowball effect of a movie. You start with Caesar coming out of hiding it for the first time in so many years, learning about what the world is now like, having to go to ape management, starting to form bonds with the other apes, till eventually forcing a rebellion and overtaking the government and overtaking the system. It just spirals out of control, similar to the way that Escape from the Planet of the Apes does it. And I think that the way that the film is paced 
taste and I think that the way it's cut and the way it's strung together, it's just so tight. There's no fat at all. It starts and then it goes and then it goes and then it ends. And it's incredibly effective in that way. It really brings out the intensity of the story. It brings out the intensity of the tone of it all. And I really, really like that about it a lot. I also like the amount of wide lenses that are used. I think it adds to the whole dystopian tone and this like really uncomfortable visual aesthetic that they're going for. It brings something a little different to the table and I think it also brings just something different to the visual look of these movies that up until now they've kind of had this more classic look to them, so what you would expect of a film of this genre in this era to look like. But then when you look at this movie, everything from the color palette to the lenses to the shots to the compositions, it just has a different look to it, it makes you feel a little more uncomfortable and it's a little more uneasy. And I really like that about it. I think it adds to everything that they're trying to do with the film as a whole. I also think it's just in general the best looking film since the original. I know that the budgets continued to get lower, but for me, I really love the way this movie looks. Maybe it's not the technically most well shot of the entire series. I think that probably still goes to the original, but I've always loved the look of this movie. I love the way that the colors look. For example, the humans are all wearing black and really muted colors while the apes are all much more colorful with their clothing. I love the amount of handheld camera work that's in it. I love the way it uses lighting in a lot of the scenes, especially the nighttime scenes. I don't know. I've always just found it really effective the way that it looks and it, and it works really well. And you're going to hear me use that word a lot in this part of the video. I think a lot of what J. Lee Thompson does is really, really effective. And continuing off of that, the way that he also uses silence and the lack of score. And I'll talk about the score later because I think the score is great, but there's a lot of this movie that's very silent and it utilizes silence in a way that none of the other films have done. And it does it in a very eerie way that works in tandem with the story that they're telling and the tone that they're trying to go for. Similarly, the blood and the intense violence, it really drives that message and the intensity home. I think that works really well with doing just the same with the silence and the camera work and the way that the entire thing looks. I think it's all just doing such a great job at bringing the intensity and the rawness and the more groundedness of this story. As ridiculous and hard to buy into a lot of it is, it does in a way feel like the most grounded story. So in general, I think Jay Lee Thompson did a great job with this movie. I think he knocked it out of the park in a lot of respects and I really think that as far as directing goes it is wild since he also directed the follow-up film which I'm gonna have a polar opposite review when I start talking about that movie but I do think he did arguably the best job as far as a director goes since the original film it just really capturing what he wanted to capture on screen. Don't think it makes it a better movie than necessarily Escape, but as far as the directing goes, I just really think he did an excellent job here. Moving on to some other stuff that I don't necessarily love about this movie, and this isn't completely the fault of the film, but a lot of the visual effects, I'll be honest, most of the visual effects are dated. They don't look good. They don't really hold up. Things like the blood, which just looks like red paint, it's not believable at all. And you had a little bit of that in the last movie, but here it's all over the place and it does not hold up. And the same can be said for a lot of the makeup and the prosthetic work. I think Caesar looks great. I think Caesar looks just as great as Cornelius did, just as great as Zira did, just as great as Dr. Zaius did. I think Caesar looks great. I think for a lot of the other apes, the ones that actually use makeup, it's noticeably cheaper. It definitely looks like it was done for a little bit lower of a budget. It looks like it was done with a little bit less effort. Not saying the artist didn't still put in their work. It just, it looks a little lower quality to me. And a big issue I had with Beneath the Planet of the Apes was that so many of the apes weren't even in makeup. They weren't wearing prosthetics. They just had pullover masks instead. And that was a big problem I had with Beneath the Planet of the Apes. That is a massive problem I have in this movie. And I understand why they did it. I understand that they had a much lower budget, even lower than Beneath the Planet of the Apes. And so I get that they had to do what they had to do but I can only speak just as a viewer and as a fan, it doesn't look good. It makes it hard to buy into some of those scenes where all the apes are coming together. When I'm looking at half the apes, especially the ones in the background, and you can just tell that it's people with masks on their face and it looks ridiculous. But 
Like with a lot of other elements of this movie, I don't mind it as much just because I am so drawn into the story and I'm so drawn into Caesar and Roddy McDowell's performance. So it does bother me. It is a big issue, but it's not enough to significantly sink the movie for me. So I can forgive it. It's fine. As for something that I really love about this movie that I don't think enough people talk about with these original films, Tom Scott's music in this movie. I'm not really familiar with him outside of this film, but I think that his music in this movie is great. I think it's really, really well done. I think he does a great job at adding new themes and new sounds, but while also still building on the tone of past apes music, it still feels like it's in that universe. It still feels like it's of this franchise, but he builds off of it and he adds to it and he does his own thing with it. It also does a really great job in conveying the anger and the eeriness, and it really emphasizes the darkness of the story. I think he does a really great job at bringing that out. When it comes to the musical score of this movie, I think it works really well and is definitely one of the standout elements of the movie for me. Anytime I watch this movie, one of the things I look forward to most are those moments, especially towards the last third of the movie, with those big brass sections of music I really think work well, and I really think drive things to that intense, dark, violent level that the movie needs to hit. Speaking of that, that violence. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this movie was originally even more violent and had a different ending, which you can now see in the unrated cut. Unlike a lot of people though, especially those that saw this when it first came out, the unrated cut is actually the version of the movie that I saw first. It was the version that TCM was airing on TV, which was where I first saw it, and so I didn't see the theatrical cut until several years later. For me, the theatrical cut is still good, but its flaws definitely become more apparent without the extra intense violence and blood and while it's not really consistent with how Caesar's character progresses in the next film, I much prefer the darker ending of the unrated cut much more over the softer and more hopeful ending of the theatrical one. It just feels like a much more fitting of an ending to this particular story. The theatrical cut doesn't fix any of the movie's script flaws, but it does improve it a decent amount by allowing it to be as dark as the story it's telling. So if you've only ever seen the theatrical cut, definitely check out the unrated version if you can. And then as for what this film is talking about, what it has to say, just like all the other apes films, some more than others. This is probably the most on the nose, blatant and unsubtle film of the entire series. Honestly, I'm not even just talking about the original five. I'm talking about the entire saga, all nine, soon to be 10 movies. There are heavy, very in your face allegories for racism and slavery and using a lot of civil rights, riots imagery. I think it works very well for this story. And I think especially for when this movie came out, it was very, very important to not be subtle and to be very blatant with its messaging with subjects like this. And I think this is very relevant to certain events that have gone on in today's day and age and continue to go on. And so I really like that it's very blatant with the way that it's calling back to that stuff. I think it's also just uses that stuff in a very smart way to propel Caesar's story forward. And also I think it has its warnings about the opportunistic tendencies and the greed of humanity and how that can lead into a fascist regime that we see in this film from the government, how that can can be used to incite fear, how that can be used to control people. I think it's really cool how they do stuff like that. When it comes to the types of themes and ideologies that these movies delve into, I think this one stands out from the entire rest of the series. For me, it just has the most interesting stuff that it's trying to talk about. Not saying it does it the best necessarily, but I'm personally just really drawn to it. I think it's handled really well. So overall, I have issues with this movie. I think it has its share of flaws. The main makeup, some of the visual effects. There are certain elements of the story that I think are rushed, but the story that they're telling is still very compelling to me. I love that coming of age journey that Caesar is going on. I love the story of rebellion. I'm always a sucker for a rebellion story. And as much as I do have issues with the movie, all of them are forgivable for me, mainly due to the character and the arc of Caesar and the remarkable performance of Roddy McDowell. I think he's so good in this movie. And it's also just so effective with its tone and its violence. It stands out among the franchise, I think as possibly the most mature entry in the entire series. And it sets the stage incredibly well for a really epic finale. Unfortunately, it didn't deliver an epic finale, but I think it sets the stage well for an epic finale. So those are all my thoughts on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. I really like this movie a lot.
lot. I think this is a really, really good, if not great movie. One of the better films in the entire Apes saga. As much as I have issues with it, I really, really enjoy it. But I want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes? What did you think of my review? Do you agree with any of my points? Do you disagree with any of my points? Where does this rank in the saga for you? If you haven't seen the film yet, did this make you want to watch it? Let me know all of your thoughts on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes down below. Thank you so much for checking out today's video here on Ape Nation. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. I'll catch you in the next one, so until then, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.